In this video, we're going to take the photogrammetry objects that we created in the last video and uh, insert them into a pottery page. Uh, to make this a little easier, um, we've got some sample files that we're going to use. And we're going to um, grab code from an existing page and, um, and repurpose it. So uh, on our pottery site, um, we have a folder called v21 which is the um all the new point clouds that are in version 2.1 of the pottery converter so if you look at the address it's 3d.w.edu slash v21 um, and in there you can see in this directory structure there is uh a folder called pages and that's where we're going to put all of the pages and in that folder there is a sample mesh.html file and what that is it's basically just a um, it's a point cloud that we've used before uh, it is the uh, Santa Croce church and um, in there, there is one um, one photogrammetry object. If we look down here on the floor, this is a a three D model of a tomb that we made. So this is a photogrammetry model embedded into the um, into the larger point cloud. So we can use this as a as a base and then add another another uh, photogrammetry object. And um, there are other examples on the site as well. When we when we do the uh, the pottery installation it it comes along with a bunch of uh, examples, and this is how we learn how to how to do different things in in pottery. So if I go back to the to the root of v21, you can see there's an examples file, and in that list of examples there are there are tons of individual examples, and there's a, even a, a sort of a directory page to navigate them. So you go to page you can see there are lots of options or lots of things to explore. The, this program does a lot of different things. Um, and what we're going to do right now is meshes. And there is a mesh, uh, a meshes sample file. And we can look at the source code of this and see how they did this and, uh, and reproduce it. And same thing with, with all these other different examples. This is how we, how we figure this out. So, uh, what I'm going to do is go back to um, the the directory where all these things live. And if you are a student uh, at WNL, you can you can have access to this to this folder, so we can um, add so we can examine these HTML files and add stuff to them. So this here on the left is the um, uh, point cloud data in a, in a, in a server called mpotry and this is where we put all of the all of the files and in there if I go to v21 this is where the pages are where our pages are and the examples folder is where all of the the examples are so we can just click on one of these and like for example if we wanted to look at the meshes file in the examples we can just right click open with and open with any text editor i'm using uh, microsoft visual studio and we can look we can examine this file and see how they how they put these things in there um, i have a i have that ex the first example i showed you is um, is also in there and i've commented it so it's a little easier to follow so I'm going to go back to this folder and we're going to um, open a file called 
in pages. It's called samplemesh.html. That's the one with the, uh, with the little model in the floor. And so if I click that and, and say open with Visual Studio, this is saying that the line endings aren't consistent. I'm just going to say no, I don't want to fix that. And so in here you can see there are some, uh, there are some libraries that get loaded at the beginning. Um, and there's a, a spot where we, this section here is where we load um, the, uh, the point cloud at the top. And then down here is where we load that mesh. So this, this, this part here where it says OBJ mesh object starts here and it ends here. So this code right here is the, is the code that puts that mesh in the floor. Okay, so all we need to do is copy that code down to where OBJ mesh ends. I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to go down a little bit and do Control V. So now I've got an exact copy, and we just need to change our. Um, uh, change all the references in this and the and the um, and the numbers to match what we need for the for the new object. So first we got to put um, put our model that we created in the last video into the proper place. So you can see here in this uh, in this code that um, there are references to a uh, a texture called to dv2.jpg and there's a uh, an OBJ model. And so all we need to do is put our new model in the same folder and change the references and and then it will um, show up as a separate object. So uh, let's hop over into our so here is our photogrammetry folder and when we exported our Joto model from, uh, from Metashape. It created these three files, uh, an OBJ, an MTL, and a, and a JPEG. The, um, the OBJ and the MTL are what we need to put into the model folder. And the structure, where that thing is located, is the um, the path, the working path that is referred to here as uh, the Pottery resource path, that is build Pottery resources. So when, when you say resource path, that means build Pottery resource and then, and then, and then add on whatever is on there. So models or textures. So under models, we have to grab our MTL file and OBJ file and drag those in there. I've already done this, so it's going to complain. Okay, so I've copied those into the model. And then I go back to resources and go to the textures folder. And then I copy in the uh, JPEG file. Now all we need to do is go into the, uh, into the code and change the references. So um, instead of to doll dv2, we have to change this to be Joto. Um, test two and change the texture to test two and then this is we're still working on the file called sample mesh and we want to keep that one so we're going to make a new version of it so I'm going to do file save as
and call this sample Jot. I'm going to overwrite it. And now if I bring up a browser, I can check this out and see what it looks like. So we're going to go to https colon slash slash 3d.wlu.edu slash v21 and then go into pages and sample Joto. Now this annotation here will lead me directly into the um, into the church where the where the photogrammetry object is, and um, I can, um, and then we can look for the model that we just put in there, and it doesn't seem like it's there, but look, it's right here. It's really small and it's really dark. So we've got a little we so it's successful. We we've got our we've got our uh, photogrammetry model of the uh, of the altarpiece in, but it's too small and it's in the wrong location. So we need to do a couple things. Um, let's head back to the code in Visual Studio. And you can see that um, we copied this from the from the other piece, and it was apparently came in much too large, so they scaled it. So this bit of code right here, object position, scale, and rotation, are um, are for the uh, Tadaldi tomb. And you can see that they they did a scalar multiplier of 0.12. So we've resized our object to be the correct size. So we're just going to change that to one. Um, and we'll leave the position alone for now. Um, and it's also facing a, uh, the wrong direction. So we're just going to change this to zero. We're just going to zero this out so we can see what the, uh, what the correct orientation is that we need. Um, and let's see. It was too small. OK, let's save this. So I'm going to do Control S to save. I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to hit refresh. And I'm going to click this Tadaldi tomb link to jump jump into the into the church. It's going to load and you can see now there's our our properly scaled but still too dark um, image. But it's probably scaled and it's, and depending on where we want to put it, uh, it's kind of in the right orientation. And you see that it's only visible from one side. And this is typical of, um, of, of polygon objects. They're, they, have a, they have a normal direction and they're visible from one side and transparent from the other side. Now let's, let me show you how to get this exactly where we want it to go. Let's say we want to put it right over here on this table. There's a table here. I'm going to change the appearance of this a little bit. Okay. So if we want to put that on this table over here, um, where my mouse is, uh, we need to know where that is. And there's a, there's a, a nice method of doing that in poetry there's a um, there are there's this measurement group here and one of the measurements is a point and so if I if I just uh, select the point measurement and click over here right on this table in the center it'll drop a point there and if I page down on the info bar on the side it will show me these are the coordinates of that point that we just laid down and if you click this little copy button, it'll copy those coordinates. Then we can just pop back over into, uh, into Visual Studio and change the object position to the same. So we're going to paste that in there. 
And the other thing is we want it to be rotated. Um, it is facing the wrong direction. It's facing the opposite wall. And these numbers are in radians. So we need to uh, rotate it. Uh, so this, these three numbers are about the x, about the y, and about the z. And so since z is up, that's what we want to rotate around. We want it to be 180 degrees from where it was. And 180 degrees in radians is uh, pi. So there is a, um, we can just type in pi or we can type in math.pi and we'll rotate that by pi. 180 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and, and save this and check out where we are. I'm going to refresh. I click totality two. I'm going to rotate around, and there it is. So now it's sitting on that table more or less, um, and it's generally in the right orientation. You can see that the, the, the one thing that it, we were careful to orient the model so that it is, um, it is square with world coordinates, but what we haven't done in this particular model is squared the church. So the church is actually not, um, not exactly square to the, the dimensions, but it's so much easier now that we've, we've done, the, um, done the work of putting the zero point on this, because now we just, all we have to do is tweak the, the, um, uh, tweak the orientation in one um, about the Z just a little bit and then move its position and it will um, and it'll be right where we need it to be. So um, what's next? We have to um, make it a little lighter. It's still super dark um, and uh, there is and the 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 lighting comes from uh, 3.js and uh, you can see down here there's a section for lights and right now there's a directional light this is the color and the intensity of the directional light and then there's also an ambient light and so uh, the way these things work is that there's a color comma and then um, and then intensity so if I turn up the ambient lighting by a three um, and uh, and let's rotate it just a bit uh, so we rotated it Let's try rotating this by math.pi plus 0.2. Save it. Come over here, refresh. Click the link to go inside. Let it load. So have to wait for the. Uh, it takes a while for it to load in. And see, we got it. We got it pretty close. So now it's sort of sitting on that table. And. And it's a little bit brighter. All right, so that's the general process for getting the photogrammetry models into Pottery. Uh, and next we're going to add an annotation to go along with this just like the annotation for 
this floor tomb.